Redlining is the denial of goods or services to people of a protected class. The term originates from lenders denying worthy applicants mortgages based on their race or ethnicity. Redlining violates fair housing and fair lending laws, both of which you must understand to pass the real estate exam. Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com and today we're talking about redlining. Let's get started. So what is redlining? Well, redlining is the practice of denying services to eligible applicants, usually on the basis of their race. The term redlining comes from when banks used to highlight risky investment neighborhoods with the color red on maps. In real estate, prejudice mortgage lending companies often redline minority neighborhoods. This prevents marginalized groups from receiving loans for new housing opportunities. Steering is the illegal practice of guiding someone to purchase or rent a home in a specific area or community based on the race, religion, color, familiar status, or disability, and steering is in fact a form of redlining. That's the connection there. Now what is reverse redlining? You might have heard of this one before. Well, reverse redlining is when banks target these same neighborhoods to offer them predatory loans. Sure, this means that citizens in these communities have home loans, but the terms of these loans are abusive. So what's the history behind redlining? Well, redlining began in the 1930s when the Homeowners Loan Corporation and Federal Home Loan Bank Board drew red lines across minority communities. These red lines indicated that these areas were too risky for mortgage loan investments. Of course, this was a tactic designed to deny housing opportunities to black citizens. While redlining is now illegal, we can still see its adverse effects on the housing market. Banks still discriminate against minority neighborhoods and have found more modern ways to do so. One example of this is called digital redlining. Digital redlining refers to the use of technology in discriminating against non-white neighborhoods. For example, Internet service providers may avoid implementing their services in marginalized communities. As a result, citizens in redlined regions lack access to high-speed internet and other digital services. This perpetuates racial inequality and keeps minorities at a disadvantage. So what's an example of redlining in real estate? Now that we've defined redlining, we should discuss some more practical examples of how it works in the real estate world. So one example would be if Red's Mortgage Lending Company frequently gave loans to residents of neighborhood A, a white community. Meanwhile, Red's Mortgage Lending Company avoids giving loans to residents of neighborhood B, a black community. If neighborhood B's residents are worthy creditors, then Red Mortgage Lending Company is likely redlining. An example of reverse redlining would be if Red's was giving loans to residents of neighborhood B, but setting abusive loan terms. The residents of neighborhood B lack other options, so they have no choice but to agree to these predatory lending agreements. So I'm gonna put a quick list of uh, examples of abusive loan terms on the screen, but essentially it's charging higher interest rates, excessive broker fees, uh, hidden balloon pay payments, loan flipping, things like that. And there's actually more and more of these, um, but those are pretty much the most common ones. So there was a digital redlining lawsuit pretty recently. In 2022, the federal government found Redfin Corporation guilty of digital redlining. Well, where did they go wrong? Well, Redfin had set a minimum price for its services and properties. The National Fair Housing Alliance claimed this harmed homes in minority neighborhoods. While Redfin lost the settlement and had to remove the policy, this shows that redlining is still an issue that impacts minorities uh, everywhere. So what are the effects of redlining? Well, there's gonna be multiple different uh, effects on you know, the fair housing and societal aspect, but essentially racial segregation, uh, reduced home values, uh, low home ownership rates, higher mortgage default rates, and increased some private mortgages. So really, no good things come from redlining. All bad things, which again, is why uh, it is illegal. Now, there are some instances when redlining isn't specifically illegal. Uh, for example, if a neighborhood falls on a fault line or maybe a floodplain, lenders can legally redline uh, that type of area. Generally speaking, mortgage lenders cannot discriminate based on zip code, but they can consider the following factors. And I'm gonna put this list on the screen. So obviously the credit history, um, someone's income, the loan amount, things like that. So what do you need to know for the real estate exam? Well, redlining is the denial of goods or services 
to people of a protected class. The term originates from lenders denying worthy applicants mortgages based on their race or ethnicity. Know this and your state-specific protected classes, and you will be good to go come exam day. For more on fair housing, click the video here and click here to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye.